Hello and welcome to the Resource Library for Art Teachers. I am so excited that you're here and that you are on this journey to include more art looking in your classroom. Uh, the Resource Library for Art Teachers is full of resources about teaching and learning with works of art. So uh, anywhere from art criticism, art history, creative activities to look at and learn from art and uh, learn about the history of art. So. In this welcome video, I'm going to give you a complete tour of the resource library so you can see all of the ins and outs of and the different areas that you get access to with your membership. And after you've watched this, if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to reach out to me if you have any questions. My email is cindy at artclasscurator.com. But we're going to talk about some common tech issues. We're going to talk about how to access your account, um, how to find all the files, how to download the files, everything like that in this video. So um, without further ado, let's talk about our first area of the resource library. So we're on my homepage, artclasscurator.com. And to access the resource library, we don't actually go anywhere on artclasscurator.com. We actually need to go over to members.artclasscurator.com. So you can click over there to this link here at the top members, or you can just navigate directly to members.artclasscurator.com. And that will take you to the member dashboard. Now, if you're not already logged in, you're going to make sure to log in. You can click remember me if you're on a private computer so you don't have to keep logging in every time. It should remember it most of the time. And then it will take you after you've logged in to your member dashboard. So below this welcome video, you will find access to your resources. So the resource library here is there. The online workshop links are here. And if you are enrolled in my separate online courses, the ancient art around the world course, that is here, but this is not part of the resource library access uh, at this time. So um, also on the member dashboard is anything new that I have posted in the last probably month. So every time I add something new, I add it up here and then I delete the ones from the bottom. So there's usually about six or seven new things listed on here at any given moment. And so that's a good place to go if you are just kind of checking in weekly and you want to see what has been posted. So most of the resources can be found by clicking resources in the top bar. You can also click on resource library. This takes you to the same spot. In this welcome video, I am going to cover all of the different types of resources that you'll find in the resource library. The first type of resource that you are going to find is the artwork of the week bundle. So when you're on the resource library homepage, you can click artwork of the week. It's the very first one. You also can find it if you're if you've been filtering and stuff, you can find it on clicking view all, clicking start here. It's also the first one of start here. So we're going to click on view and we'll see what this is all about. Now each month I curate a weekly art experience for your students. So I choose one artwork of the week. I create a PowerPoint that has that artwork on it so you can easily show it to your students. And then I create discussion questions and activity suggestions and extension activities that you could use related to that artwork. So every month you're getting uh, a library of new activities and artworks to use in your classroom. So this one is January 2018 when I'm filming this video. And these are the six or the five artworks that are in January. So we have a connection with Martin Luther King Jr. Day here in the United States. We have a Kandinsky painting, an icebergs painting. I thought I'd do a little winter connection and a mask and um, a, this is from Papua New Guinea. And this is a mask from Africa from uh, the Congo people. Now, these resources, you can see, you'll click here to download the bundle and you'll get a zip file with all of the resources in it, including the PowerPoint, a lesson plan, and activity suggestions, any links that you need to access them, you know, to find the uh, more information and stuff like that are all inside of this bundle. And then every month, this one is taken down and a new one is put up. So the next one in is going to be on February 5th and then this January one will go away and so you'll see here expired resources um, these were the old ones and so these are the ones that have been taken down 
but I do like to try to connect it to what's going on in the world. So for example, September 11th, I did the September 11th Memorial. In November, it was Native American Heritage Month here in the United States, so I included a lot of Native American art. Um, Halloween, I did sort of creepy one and, and stuff like that. So I try to incorporate kind of um, seasonal things as well as incorporating things from around the world, artists of color, um, female artists, and even f- and famous artists too. So it's a, it's a good mix of those sorts of things. So you'll find all of those in the artwork of the week section. So make sure you download it every month because it does go away. That's the only thing in the resource library that does go away. Um, and that is the, this artwork of the week. So um, I do send an email every time I post a new one. So you'll be able to go and download it right away. We're back on the resource library dashboard to show you the online workshops area of the course. So to access this area, there's a couple ways to do it. One, you can click workshops in the top bar. Two, you can click access now online workshops from the dashboard. And three, when you're in the resource library, you can also click um, online workshops and videos, and that will filter out all of the workshops. But we're going to go to the workshops page because that's what incorporates the workshop schedule. So down here in recorded section sessions, you can find all of the online trainings that we've had so far, um, all of the recordings, the PowerPoints, the certificates of participation, and other sort of things. So if we go to this online training memorization and close observation activity, you will see the session was on November 16th. Here's the session recording. Here's a certificate of attendance, uh, the PowerPoint and a PDF of the presentation and any related resources. So this activity has a PowerPoint uh, or t- discussed at an activity where there's a PowerPoint and video online. So you can click over on here. The recordings actually are in multiple different formats because I have switched to a different, a couple different formats in my years of doing this. So this one is a, is in the platform called Electa Live. Some of them are in Electa Live. You can, all you have to do is click on it. You have to have just this little app um, that is really easy to download. It's not, um, it's very easy. So once you've done that, then you can click Start Electa Live and then it will um, open up the recording, which you can see here. If I pause so I don't hear myself talk, you can watch the recording. And so we have all the discussion with the attendees and stuff like that. Others are videos. So I think this one is a video, let me see. May or may not be, yes. So this one was a webinar, but I have a video of it and you'll hear me talking to people, but you won't see the chat, but you'll get the content. And then there are other ones where they are in a platform called Webinar Jam. So that's what this one is. When you click on it, you'll have to enter your name and email address. It's not a big deal. It actually only goes to me. No one else will see it. And I don't even look at it. Um, But it's just a way to keep track of who watches them. Enter now and then you will watch the recording. Now. These have a little bit of slow time at the beginning, so you'll have to kind of wait. It looks like it's frozen, but it's not actually frozen. You just kind of have to wait for a little bit and then you watch it as if it's happening live. So um, don't worry if you are, Hello there, oh, and welcome. Uh, this is like that. <laughs> and then, um, yeah, so there's three different ways of watching the different trainings and um, depending on which training it is, it has a different way of watching. Okay, for the winter and spring semester of 2018, I have a very exciting announcement in that we are going to have a art appreciation masterclass. So instead of the monthly webinars, we are gonna have a weekly video series. And that is linked on this page under upcoming online workshops on the workshops page, which we were just at. Click here for more information and you also will, it will also show up down here somewhere. Coming soon, Art Appreciation Masterclass. We're going to click on that and so you can see what this is all about. So this is a 13 week video course 
just for teaching art appreciation. So I'm taking all of my best ideas, my best topics, and I'm going to distill them into small videos that are sort of easy to digest that you can get kind of in a really quick, quick bites. Instead of watching a full one hour webinar, you can watch, you know, a five or 10 minute, 15 minute video talking about different topics. So I'm very excited to produce this for you and you will see here the schedule of what the topics are each time and sometimes they'll have two videos per week and sometimes it'll be just one kind of depending on how long the videos are going to be so um, you can look forward to that as long as you keep your membership active you'll have access to this the this content and so once you these have gone live they'll stay active in your account so um, you'll be able to access all of these videos as we go Okay, so those were the sort of extras, the whipped cream and the cherry on top of the resource library for art teachers. But now let's get into the meat and potatoes here, or the banana split. This is the resource library for art teachers. This is where you're going to find all of your content. Now, at the top of the page, you will see all of these headings. So we have start here. So if you're kind of overwhelmed, you don't know where to start, I, I would click start here to see some of my favorite content and then you will have it broken down into category we have online workshops and videos aesthetics and criticism elements and principles of art art forms um, any content that has art projects art classroom materials so there's like a rules poster there's different things like that um, art history general so materials that cover a lot of art history content um, that is not specific to a particular movement. Then we have it broken down into art history chunks. So we have ancient and non-Western, Middle Ages, Renaissance and Baroque, 18th, 19th century, 20th century, and then individual artists and artworks. So you, some of these resources will show up in multiple categories, but when you click on one of these categories, so we'll just click on ancient and non-Western, notice the switch down here, and now it is only showing you the stuff that is an ancient and non-Western category. So if we scroll down, you can see there's videos, there's individual artwork PowerPoints, there's assignments, um, there's different lessons all here. So to access your materials, you just click on one of them. It'll give you a little bit of an overview of what that resource is about. And then you can access your files. So we have here the Australian Aboriginal PowerPoint and lesson. So we can see we've got the PowerPoint, we have a PDF of the PowerPoint. Some people have issues with PowerPoint or they can't open PowerPoint or something. So the PDF is easy for anybody to, to download. And then the notice it says, see the slide notes for discussion points. So we're gonna open that. I'm gonna show you what I mean. Um, and then if there's anything you need to print, there's quizzes, there's a quiz key, um, visual reference for the uh, animals project and a video notes worksheet. So a lot of different types of files. So each one has, you know, some of them might have one file, some of them might have se seven files, some of them might have 12 files. So it really just depends on the lesson and, 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 uh, and everything like that. So if there's a blog post that's related, I'll link to that. And so you can check that out here um, where I, you know, I wrote about this lesson on my website. So we're going to open the PowerPoint. So when you're in one of the PowerPoints, you'll see the first slide is a terms of use slide. So I just want to point out a couple different things that um, you need to be aware of as a member of the resource library. One, this is for individual use. This isn't for your entire school to use or your entire district. So um, if you've somehow been given this and you are not a member of the resource library, I encourage you to join um, and also realize that this is a, in, an individual membership. Also, you are allowed to save this on your computer and use it in your classroom however you want. So if you need to email it to yourself or put it in your own Google Drive so that you can access it in your Google, Google Classroom and stuff like that, that's totally okay, but you cannot um, share the file with anybody else. So that's the main issue. Okay, and then you can't take it and sell it, of course because, you know, that is wrong. Okay, <laughs> all right, so notice here I have in the notes some 
discussion questions. So you can look in there to see kind of what you want, what you might want to say. And then, you know, if, um, if I have anything, you know, topics to discuss in each, cause I don't like to put a lot of PowerPoint or text on my PowerPoints. I find it to be, um, boring and the students get distracted by all the text. I rather, um, have just images. So there we go. So here's a group activity and then, um, it tells you kind of what to do in the files. Some lessons have a full written out lesson plan and these are becoming more and more prevalent. I've hired someone to help me write these lesson plans. So you'll see if you're on this one, you'll see down here, we have a full lesson plan day one, do this day that, you know, step one, step two, step three. Uh, we are working on adding more of these into the resource library as we go. But right now, most of this, this sort of information is in the notes of the slides. So um, note, this is the direction we're moving and uh, it just takes some time to get them all, all written out. So, but you can also download the lesson plan. It's, it's in the post so that it can be searched, but you can also download a copy of it here. And so this one here, you know, has the lesson plan, the PowerPoint, a review page, a key, a quiz, you know, uh, all sorts of different things. The search bar is functional. It will find files for you based on the artist's name, based on the art movement and stuff like that. But please know that it is not Google. It's not as good as Google, mainly because all of the files, the PowerPoints, the PDFs are not searchable through the search feature because they are downloads. So everything in the search area are things we've added manually. We've tagged things different ways. So you might be looking for something specific and not finding it. So for example, you might click sculpture. Well, there's going to be sculpture in a lot of different lessons, but it's not necessarily going to pull up all of those lessons. So you might not find everything. The best thing you want to do, you know, if you can't find something you're looking for is to then try the category. So think about what category it might be in and then look for it. So, okay, you're looking for classical sculpture. It's going to be an ancient section and then look that way. And the search is good in, but it is not a hundred percent accurate at this point. And eventually once we get all those lesson plans put in, it will be a lot easier to search, but just know that that feature is a little bit limited at this moment. So also notice that when you're searching, you are going to find content that is actually not part of the resource library, but it's part of one of the courses, which are separate. So we will click, like if I click on this art of the ancient Near East lesson two video transcription, it's going to say, I'm sorry, this page isn't available. So that means usually that that is part of the course, the ancient art around the world course. And you can usually tell by the title. Um, if it's a video transcription, it's often part of the course. If you're interested in enrolling in the course, you're welcome to, of course, but, um, you are going to pull up some information that is not part of your membership through that search feature. When you're in a resource from the resource library, there's a couple options to save the content. Now, under this picture, you will see there's a little check mark, there's a bookmark and a star. Now these are for your use. So you can categorize these however you want. This one is technically considered complete. So maybe you can mark this as complete. You can mark this as a bookmark or you could mark this as a favorite. So once I've done that, I can go to your favorites in the sidebar. So you see when I'm in your favorites, it has all the things I've marked in those three categories and it marks the day that you did that. So today is the day I marked all of these as favorites, but you know, if you did it two weeks ago, it'll put the date that you did that. So it's a really useful way to uh, make note of the ones that you really like, the ones you want to try. And then, you know, you've got these three categories to play with however you want. Now let's talk about the other areas of the site that contain useful information for you. In the sidebar, you will find a quick links area. In that quick links, you have links to all of the important areas of the site, the member dashboard, which is that home page, the resource library content, which is the page that we're on right now. Uh, the your favorites which has all of your bookmarked and favorited content and then a resource library updates page so if we click on that that contains all of my 
emails that I've sent. So every week I send a email that covers all of the new content for that week. And you can find those all posted in the resource library update. So you don't have to worry about losing track of your emails. They're all in here um, exactly word for word. So you can click on those to get the full email text. Also in the sidebar, you will find uh, account options. So we're gonna click on that. And this is where you can make updates to your account. So if you need to change your email address, you can do that here. If you need to change your subscription, you can do that here. If you paid with a credit card, you will have the option to cancel your plan here. If you paid via PayPal, you have to do that in PayPal and I will show you how to access that information as well. So if you are on a monthly billing cycle, you can update this and convert it to a yearly plan. So that means you get the two free months. If you would like to upgrade your plan, you just click on change plan and then you can change to a year and it will prorate your payment based on how much you've already paid. And so in this case, it will charge me today $217 because I've already paid a certain amount for the year. And then you just do that, click select plan and it'll walk you through um, the next steps. So in this case, it'll take me to the one year registration page where then I can fill out the payment information. So it basically creates like a new membership and cancels the old membership. So uh, that's why you have to enter your payment in again. Also, if you, that will work if you are both on PayPal or if you are on, if you paid with a credit card. Clicking update will allow you to update your credit card. So I click on that, I'll enter in my new credit card information. So if you're, if you got a credit card expiring notice or something like that, you can do that right here. And to cancel the plan, you just click cancel. And um, here it will list all the payments that you've made up until this point. And then you also can tell like when your next billing cycle is. So this one was created on October 10th. You can see my next billing is going to be on February 11th. So it will, you can kind of keep an eye on when it's going to charge you next. When you do cancel, it does give you access for the full month from whenever you canceled. So it'll like, if I canceled today, it will give me access until February 11th and that's when my membership will cancel. So if you paid via PayPal, you can go to how to, how to cancel your membership and it will take you to this page here. And these are your PayPal instructions. So you actually have to go into PayPal and then do it there. It will not let you do it on my site, only on PayPal. All right, let's continue on with the sidebar. Your weekly art break. So these are my emails that I send to my whole list. They're the free emails I send every week, not just to members, but members get access to the archives of the Your Weekly Art Break for as long as I've been sending them. So I've done 16 of these, so all 16 are here in the resource library, and you can check those out here. Basically, all the emails I send to the big list are sent, are also posted on here, so you can find you know, all the interesting links, um, links to blog posts, links to, you know, and the artworks of the week that I post on there. You can access those at any time. Here's our Facebook group for the resource library. So you can click on there to access that. To join it, you just enter in the email you used to, um, to join the resource library, and then you can get all of my updates there as well. Okay, upcoming trainings and office hours. That's the workshops page we've already talked about. And then also the support page has some how to's. So uh, how to access your account, how to upgrade your membership, cancel your membership, broken and expired links, which we'll talk about next. So when you get, if you ever get this error here, it says this XML file does not appear to have any style information. It looks just like this is access denied. Um, this is, the link is not actually broken. It just means that you've had that tab open a really long time. So when you open a page, like I opened this one quite a while ago, I don't know if I opened it that long or if it's been the full 15 minutes, but this, the links on this page will only be active for about 15 minutes actual after you open this link. So if you have this if you open this tab and then you go teach a class and then you come back during your planning time and you click on one of these links and nothing happens. Oh, good. Here we go. 
Um, it's because you just had that tab open too long and you'll get this error. It doesn't mean there's anything wrong with the files. So to do that, you all to get the files, just click back and you just want to click refresh. So in my case, I'm using Safari. I'm just going to click this little circle button and then now click the same link. It worked fine. It's downloading the file. So just uh, be aware that that will happen if you leave tabs open for too long. So if you, if you, you know, click on this, go teach a class, you come back before even clicking anything, just go ahead and click refresh and that will refresh all of those links and then you'll be fine. So that's the biggest tech issue we, we see. There's nothing wrong with the files. It's just a security feature for, um, for the membership site to protect the files. And the time on those is, is 15 minutes. So you have about 15 minutes before it, it times out. Okay, also on that support page, there is a contact form. So you can send me an email. This will go to um, support at artclasscurator.com, which we will get back to you as soon as we can. And then also here, join the email list. I send out the, I send out the weekly emails with updates. And if you are not receiving those emails, this is where you can sign up. If somehow you accidentally unsubscribed or something like that, you can get yourself on that list right here. And then also under recent updates, all of the email updates and the Your Weekly Art Breaks are posted here. So these are the most recent um, emails that I've sent out. All right, I think that is it. The support page we covered. This is how to access your account page. You also can access your account page here. Under click your, your picture, click account, the your content that has your favorites, and then the support are all linked up here as well. Okay, that is your tour. Thank you so much again for joining and for being a part of this awesome community. I look forward to continuing to create awesome resources for you and for your students. So again, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out, cindy at artclasscurator.com. Happy to help in any way that I can. Um, have a wonderful day, enjoy the resources, and um, have a wonderful school year.